Hello there, Submariners. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com, and I am going to be delving into a little project that many people uh, keep inquiring about, and this is the idea of waterproof servos. Uh, I want to talk about waterproofing a servo so that you can mount it outside your waterproof container in your RC submarine for certain applications. So I want to show you what I've got on the workbench here. My version of a waterproof servo and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing working for installation uh, in a 150th scale Surkouf submarine project that I own myself. All right, one of the first things that I want to touch on is this idea of a bot waterproof servo. You may be saying, well, why would I go about all of this work to waterproof a servo when I can just buy it off of eBay or Amazon? The thing you've got to realize is those waterproof servos are not waterproof. They're water resistant. They're basically designed to be put into like RC trucks and boats where they get splashed and they will prevent the ingress of water to the inner workings of the servo. They are not designed to prevent water from forcing its way in past these uh, seals that they have at pressure, which is what is going to be experienced when an RC submarine dives. So big difference uh, between the actual functional term of waterproof and actual waterproof servos. I'm going to take a standard servo and we are going to fully waterproof it with just a few cents worth of parts and a few minutes of your time. So let's take a look. All right, here's my little workbench uh, and I've got a servo on here. Now this is a, you know, a, a higher end servo, uh, it's got ball bearings and uh, it was one of those so-called waterproof servos, um, which it's not by the way. The only real difference that I can see uh, is that there's a pretty tight tolerance on the top here between that rotating shaft and the body, but there is no seal. And then at the bottom there is a very thin uh, rubber seal around the bottom and around the top. So um, not waterproof, but we're gonna we're gonna make it that way. And I've simply undone these four bolts on the bottom and taking the bottom off. That's all I've done to the servo. You can see the inner workings. Got a nice beefy motor in there and a control circuit board. So what I am going to do is uh, a couple of things. We're going to start by um, waterproofing the upper part of the servo, this rotating shaft. And uh, to do that is a very simple process. We're simply going to use uh, an appropriately sized O-ring I'm going to slip it over that shaft and then I'm going to put my servo horn on the top and what's going to happen when you tighten that down it's going to compress that o-ring slightly against that top surface and create a waterproof seal on the upper part of the servo. Before I tighten that down what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take some silicone grease. I'm just going to apply that around the base of that shaft. All the way around the perimeter. Just like that. Slip the o-ring on and then I'm going to do the same thing to the upper surface of the o-ring as well. Again, grease does not waterproof anything. It simply helps mitigate friction. So that done, I'm going to pop my servo horn on the top. 
And then once I tighten that down, I can wipe off the excess grease. All right, so when we think about why water gets into you know, compartments, or in this case, a servo, the fundamental reason is because there's a pressure differential between the water outside the servo and the air inside the servo. And so what we want to do is completely mitigate that from happening at all. And the way that we're gonna end up doing that is by filling the servo with an incompressible media. And in this case, uh, we're gonna be using some olive oil. Olive oil is an exceptionally good insulator. Um, read a study saying that basically uh, it works exceptionally well for isolating electrical components. So what we're gonna try is filling the servo with olive oil all the way up to the top. And uh, in that way, there's no possible manner for water to force its way in against an incompressible media inside the servo. So let's take a look at how we're gonna do it with this particular servo. So as I mentioned, the only thing I've done on the bottom here is remove that bottom cap. So um, what I have noticed on the inside there, I'm gonna try and show this to you, is that the inside of the, uh, there we go, of the, those screw holes is actually open to the inside of the servo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leverage that by keeping one of those holes open and using that as the fill port for the oil. All right, now that we have the top all sealed, what we need to do is make sure that all of our seams are sealed. And what I've done, I've actually removed these little O-rings that were on there. And I've used epoxy uh, around those seams to make sure that there's absolutely no leaks possible. So the uh, upper part is permanently affixed to the center part, the center part permanently affixed to the bottom. So in theory, um, it is completely sealed at the top along these seams, and now we just need to worry about these bottom parts here. These um, bolts have O-rings on them, which is uh, certainly a good thing. What I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna put these um, in place at three points, and I'm gonna use the last empty hole to fill the entire servo with that uh, olive oil. So let's go ahead and get that started. So what we need for the next step is uh, a syringe. Uh, you could probably get away with uh, you know, some other method, but it would be a lot messier, I think. So I'm just gonna use this to draw up some olive oil that I stole from the kitchen. Not entirely sure how much we need, so we'll get a good healthy dose in there. Wipe that off. And uh, keeping this tilted so that's the highest point in the servo, we'll just start filling that servo with oil one drop at a time until it's completely full. No, nope, that's pretty well it. It's going down a little bit. So I'm just gonna continue to top this off until it just will not accept any more oil. So as you can see, the oil has been topped all the way up uh, to the very top of the servo. And uh, what I wanna make sure I do is, is tap this as much as I can to see if there's any trapped air bubbles uh, inside. I don't really see any air escaping, so I'm pretty sure because I filled it from the bottom up uh, that we got the entire thing filled with oil. So that done, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put that last bolt 
back into place and in theory the entire thing will be completely sealed and uh, ready to test to make sure we didn't screw anything up in there. Okay, uh, that is the <laughs> completed uh, waterproof servo. We're going to do one more step uh, after all of this, but first off, we've got to see if this actually works. So uh, I'm going to pull out my tester here, connect everything up. No, well, that's promising. looks like we are in good shape. So now we've got an oil filled servo completely sealed from exterior elements but we're going to take it even one step further and we're going to spray on some uh, waterproofing rubber uh, around the outside there just to make sure that there's not uh, any chance of water getting in through these seams and screw holes uh, and wire egresses in the servo. All right, what I am going to use for this next step, uh, this is just a leak seal product yet from like Home Depot. There's lots of different variations. You can use Plastidip, which is nice and probably give you a nicer surface finish as well, but I'm going to use this because uh, I have it and I want to get rid of this can because there's just a little bit left in the bottom. Um, taped off my wire so I don't get any on the long edge of the wire and I taped off the top because I don't want to get any on the top. Uh, and basically we're just going to hit that uh, servo with a nice even coating of that waterproofing spray. And there we have it. Let's let that sucker dry really well. And then we're gonna move into the testing phase. Well, there you go, guys. That is how I attempt to accomplish a true waterproof servo. Uh, I have this now um, all connected. I've had it uh, for about two or three days now, sitting on the bench, uh, upside down, looking for any leaks or indication of oil uh, coming out of any of the scenes and I have not yet been able to find any so uh, that's good I uh, got it hooked up and as you can see still fully functioning which means uh, it doesn't mind that oil in there at all so what I'm going to do now uh, I'm going to install this in my surkoof to swivel the big guns uh, up on the the deck there and uh, if for whatever reason it doesn't seem to work. I will post a follow-up video so that none of you guys get steered in the wrong direction, but uh, I think that this is going to be the way to go. Um, certainly much more robust than simply coating the servo in, uh, you know, like rubber and, uh, and crossing your fingers because, as I said earlier, we've eliminated the differential pressure between the outside and the inside of the servo. So. I am Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. Thanks for joining me. If you are interested in this hobby of RC submarines, by all means, I invite you to visit my website at nautilusdrydocks.com for lots of tips, resources, kits, parts, and components for this amazing hobby. Thanks again, everyone. We'll catch you next time.